Sure. All right. That's what I'm talking about, Corey. See, you're coming out of your shell, man. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Maybe uh, a little. Yeah, maybe a little. Well, uh, yeah, let's do that at the top of the hour. So everybody just uh, get ready for that. All right. Let's uh, let's go through these questions. Uh, let's see. First one up. What do you feel is the purpose of the divine feminine in disclosure? Well, the the divine the divine feminine is um, actually probably what we're going to disclose into. You know, where this whole. Um, I guess, masculine, testosterone-driven, warlike world that we have now is going to fade away, you know, as they say, you know, people are going to beat their uh, spears and swords into plowshares, and, uh, you know, people are, are going to, uh, are, are, you know, they're, they're actually going to get along. So, you know, I think that's very much what we're we're heading into, that type of energy, and, it's uh, it's it's just what we're phasing we're phasing out of the um, uh, I guess and I, and I know and I know when they say masculine and feminine you know what I think I know what they mean you know we're we're really transitioning into a I guess a, a more of a feminine energy and is that the way uh, the blue avion culture is is based something more balanced and and not as masculine yeah i mean there there's you don't you don't have the ego you don't have the uh, you know you know people broadening their chest trying trying to get the attention or uh, trying to push their point of view across it's 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 you know it's really hard for us to understand what uh beings are from another density because we try we you know we try to project the way we think and the way we behave onto them you know just like we do other humans i've always wanted to know this with uh some of the a lot of the depictions in in egypt of uh and and not only egypt but greece and 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 other cultures uh with bird-headed humans is that uh, do you think that that is a direct connection to blue avian contact uh in the past you know i i had been on the fence about that until um you know i met uh you know william henry and uh mm -hmm. saw a lot of his you know his uh book right now is selling you know selling out like crazy because uh you know the art work and all, all the research he's done and he's he's done it for you know, a long time since like 2003, he's been looking at these things. That's right. So it became very obvious to me that there there's a connection. Oh, uh, let's see here. Uh, the Mergellans. I just got an email about this, and it says I've been dealing with this for over six years. Does Corey know anything about this stuff? I don't. I no, I, don't. I I don't either. Okay, next question up. How can we co-create guidelines for unity in the community? Well, the way you do it is in your own behavior and your own thought processes. That's that's the normal one, norm, the the best way to affect the consciousness of others around you, and it's basically leading by example. You know, the, you know. It's, not don't go on to forums and sit there and argue back and forth, you know, what disclosure is or what alien groups are good and bad. And you know what? None of us are going to be able to know until we get all of the information. Right now we're picking things up off the floor and investigating and doing the best we can. And we all are looking at things through different lenses and different belief systems. So, you know, we're never going to be able to come together, work together, or agree if we're focusing on all these, you know, little ide ideologies and belief systems. What do, so, you, know, what do you think so, about that, Corey? I'm sure that you had no clue about the infighting and the ego that is involved with not only disclosure, but ufology and ET contact in general. Was that shocking to you? And what do you think about the infighting? It it was a incredible shock to me. Um, you know, I was 
you know, a lot of people in, in this business really present themselves to be, you know, spiritually evolved and um, that will present themselves one way. And then, you know, they're, they're the antithesis of that. And uh, yeah, and there's a lot of people that have gotten caught up in ego wanting, you know, their, their truth or their information to be more popular than everyone else's. And, uh, you know, it, it, it's, uh, it, it was very disappointing, but there are also a lot of really, uh, solid, good people in, in, in this industry. And, um, but, you know, for us to get anywhere, we're going to have to work with the egomaniacs, the people that are, uh, completely triggered every time someone says something that goes against their personal, uh, ideology or belief system, you know, until we, until we just, you know, decide to put a, like a, a mask over all of this information that, you know, we're arguing about and just stand together, you know, do, you know, protests where, you know, we walk on, uh, Washington, you know, do a March, you know, a, a million man, uh, disclosure March, you know, if, none of that will happen unless we begin to, um, agree to disagree on ideology and just push for the information to be released. Yes. And I, uh, I had a conversation, Rita and I had a conversation uh, recently with with somebody that we respect, somebody that we all respect, um, and I, I'm not going to go further with that. I don't want to reveal who this person was, but this was his comment, and he said, you know, I can't deal with the ego in ufology anymore. There are too many people out there that absolutely insist that they have the answers and they know what's going on. And I don't know what's going on. And all we can do is sit down and communicate with each other and share ideas and not, he said, I just cannot deal with anybody anymore that just says, this is what's happening. And, and I'm just thinking about that's exactly right. What, what he said was exactly right. We all need to sit down, share information, and talk through this. We can't let ego and infighting and it's my way or the highway come uh, in between us because that kind of divide and conquer is exactly what we don't need. Absolutely. I agree wholeheart wholeheartedly with what you just said. It's, it, it, it's crazy. And I, you know what? And along with you, I will always, when, when I'm around the ego out there, I have stood my ground, man. I was like, stop this crap. Just stop it. <laughs> I'm not, I'm not going to be part of it. All right, let's get to the next question. Could you please ask Corey what, oh, this is great. By the way, you're going to enjoy this. Okay. So please ask Corey what he would tell Elon Musk if he found himself sitting across from him in a closed meeting. Well, <clears throat> I, I would first of all inform uh, or, or encourage him to be extremely careful with this um, artificial intelligence uh, um, stuff that he's starting to delve into. He, he sounds like he's got a very good head on his head, very good uh, head on his shoulders about, uh, about the uh, dangers of artificial intelligence. But, um, you know, I, I would uh, basically tell him to uh, uh, really focus on uh, what he's doing to uh, try to get his group to Mars. I think there's going to be uh, a lot of little things that are going to occur that are going to be setbacks, just like NASA had when they were being interfered with. And uh, he just needs to persevere and push through. And uh, um, there's, you know, just hope that uh, this uh, space program that he has, that's a corporate one, will uh, give us more transparency than uh, the than NASA has. Uh, SpaceX, which is uh, the the main building, is over here in Los Angeles, and I don't know if you've seen it. But the next time, if you haven't, yeah. the next time you're in LA, I'll take you over there. You've got to see this. The building, it, it's like the biggest thing you've ever seen. Right? It's huge. Now it's not tall. 
it's just block after block after block and it's deep it's like five stories tall but it is this monstrosity and you go and you see that and then you kind of understand the amount of money and what is truly behind the program because it's insane it's like nothing nasa has nothing that that looks like this it's extraordinary there's a second part to this question what would you say to donald trump in a closed meeting Hmm. well donald trump i believe um, from what i've seen in the past has uh, an interest in conspiracy theory or a different you know, non-mainstream types of information. So um, I think that he might be a little bit more open to, um, you know, hearing information, uh, you know, in in a uh, briefing that would, uh, I guess, shed light on on some of these uh, 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 programs, you know, that are in special access programs, unacknowledged programs that uh, he's going to have a problem uh, being briefed on himself from the government. Right. So, you know, I, I would, I, you know, I don't know him being the supposed outsider. I would hope that he would be open to, um, you know, providing more information to the public, but I, I really don't think that any type of disclosure or any type of information is going to be released from a public office. I really don't see it. Does O negative blood have anything to do with empathic or contact? Uh, I have been asked that before, um, and, uh, people of all different blood types are having these experiences. Uh, I'm O positive, uh, myself. So, um, I, I really don't see a blood type, um, being a part of it as much as, um, uh, a, uh, genealogy that they're interested in. Interesting. Interesting. Man, the questions are coming in. Okay. Can you ask Corey if he has been told anything about the upcoming election? You knew this question was coming. Well, the, the, the only thing that I've been told uh, is that uh, they believe that everything is going to, uh, that, that the um, establishment is going to do everything it can to prevent him from winning the election. Um, you know, even if they have to steal the election, uh, no matter what they have to do. Yeah, speak up. So, speak up, Corey. You were loud, now you're quiet. Yeah, sorry about that. Oh, there you go. Um, there you go. Yeah. But, uh, um, you know, I, I, yeah, I've heard that there's a lot of interference going on, that uh, a lot of the alliance were pushing for the movements behind uh, Sanders and Trump. Uh, but, um, you know, as far as an, how the outcome will be, I have not heard any details. How many people do not want to discuss other non-Earth races or energetic galactic waves? How do we breach that chasm? Well, we, first of all, we, we, we can't just expect to bridge that chasm immediately. Uh, that's the whole point of why we're presenting information the way we are uh, at uh, TrueDisclosure.org. You know, the, the people people have been programmed to uh, ridicule anything that has to do with non-terrestrials or UFOs. Any any of that. People are thoroughly programmed. So the only way we're going to get them to begin to bridge the gap is to present the nuts and bolts information from people that are credentialed, people that you know they can look up, they can investigate. And um, at that point, if their mind starts to open up, they're going to start bridging the gap on their own by doing their own investigations into all the all the different contactees, all the different information that's out there. You know, they'll, they'll start filtering down to that information when they're ready. But if they're not ready, we don't need to be shoving it down their throat. Are you hip to the Mandela effect? Um, yeah, I've... Uh, yeah, I've I've been looking into that just actually pretty recently. Yes. So uh, I, I I think I'd heard about it uh, on forums and stuff, and I never really looked at it. But when I was up at the doing the last cosmic disclosure taping, uh, Jay Widener brought it up and talked about it in detail, and it definitely got my attention. Yeah, it's pretty trippy, and that's what the next question is about. So I wanted to make sure that 
you knew what the Mandela effect was because it is so recent too as well. But the question is, ask Corey if the Mandela effect could be explained with parallel timelines. Absolutely. Um, you know, one of the things I discussed on cosmic disclosure is that um, they, you know, when you, when you can travel in space, you can travel in time. If, if you're uh, traveling through space, long, far distances, you can travel on time. I mean, it's, uh, it's just, you know, the, the, the technologies, that's just the way it works. Right. I'm starting so, to lose you again, Corey. You need to... Uh... Okay, is this better? Yeah. See, there you are, man. Now you're... <laughs> it's okay. I know how it goes after, you know, two hours on the program. And uh, uh, you uh, you tend to, not you, uh, all guests will drift away uh, from the microphone. Um, yeah, the phone's starting to just slowly drift away from my face. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> I won't tell everybody what you and I talked about earlier, but there's a reason for Corey and I being a little spaced out right now. So, <laughs> so <laughs> uh, next question. And, and this was brought up last night and I knew that this was go going to uh, uh, be part of our conversation tonight, but can you elaborate on the intergalactic portal near our sun that David Wilcox spoke about last night? Yeah. Yeah. The, um, the, the entire, galaxy and universe is connected by um, like electromagnetic filaments and in the space program that they uh, called it the, uh, the cosmic web and every star is connected to every other star through one of these filaments and so you're, you're going to have local stargates th that these filaments are, are basically what you traverse when you go when you travel from star to star through a stargate. So in uh, different areas, you're going to have some of these, these super gates that feed into a, uh, that's a wider uh, trunk or, or branch of uh, the cosmic web that feeds off into sm smaller filaments and that those larger filaments connect galaxies together. Interesting. And we have one, and we have one that is very close to our star. That is uh, um, um, a very coveted um, portal. It, was it was it intentionally constructed to be here in our solar system, or was this no. you know part of nature? No, it, it was it was a na it's a natural portal. Interesting. And why do you think, uh, I understand that it's natural, but why do you think we got so lucky? Um, I, you know, it's, uh, not, not necessarily that we got so lucky. It's that, uh, this is where all the action was. And this is where all, uh, a lot of the genetic farmers, uh, came to, um, do the work, which apparently is what we are, their work. Mahoney wants to know, it's his name, if there are nano aliens. I think I, I know what they're talking about. Um, um, I, I don't have any information on, uh, you know, microscopic types of uh, uh, alien beings. Um, but uh, there are some, you know, very, very small uh, uh, non-terrestrials. You know, there's uh, been craft that appear that will appear, and uh, it looks sort of like uh, uh, a giant uh, wheel from like a big rig, and uh, it, it they'll be full of like 40, 80 different types of beings in, inside of these very small craft. So there are um, there are definitely uh, very small beings. But when you say small and small craft, uh, how small are we talking? Uh, about the size of uh, the wheel of, of a big rig. Uh, oh, really? Trailer. Okay. Yeah. And so the beings themselves, what are we talking about? An inch tall, smaller? Yeah, you know, yeah. Uh, I, you know, I, I don't know. I, I don't know uh, what the size of, of the beings that were inside that craft. Uh, they, um, this, this, this 
craft that I'm describing, this, this size craft, has appeared in front of a lot of people, and they say that they just observe. They'll pop in for a couple seconds and then pop out, and they're gone. They'll come in and observe something. I'll, I'll be honest with everybody. I actually talked to Corey about this when we were sitting next to each other at our little uh, barbecue, and it was the same answer then. And I really, really want to know. Uh, but, uh, there you go. Okay. I, I just kind of threw myself under the bus. Have you, Corey, ever seen, I want to, I want to read this exactly as it is written here. Have you ever seen an ET that looks so funny that you laughed out loud? Mm, no, not to where I laughed out loud. No. Did you see um, one that was, <laughs> and I know you understand and appreciate the question, you know, well, you know, yeah, just I mean, something goofy. Some of them, they'll, they'll move around a little bizarrely or, you know, uh, you know, they'll kind of twitch, move around real uh, jerky like or twitchy like and um, with, uh, you know, their eyes, you know, it, it don't strike you as very strange, but not, not nothing that would make you laugh. Right, right. <laughs> uh, Jimmy, please ask Corey, those who are born with red hair, are they galactic human? I have no idea. We're all galactic human. Fair enough. But, yeah, I, I have no idea, you know, um, what what it means if you're born with red hair or if you're, you know, born with blue eyes or green eyes, you know, I, I have no idea. Please ask Corey to update us. I, I got to tell you, man, I've got 